what are the opportunities for women in the music business? So I'd like to start off with each of our guests, um, our wonderful, beautiful uh, women role models in the music industry or in the creative industry in general, um, uh, just to say a little bit about themselves so that you get to know what it is they do. Uh, can we start with you, Shock? I'll say, my name is DJ Shock. I am f a formerly trained DJ. I've been DJing since 2004. I was trained at Homeboys. And I am the founder of the Association of Disc Jockeys East Africa. I've been using it as a platform to mentor DJs online and offline, uh, mostly in Kenya, but there are a few in the diaspora and some who are not Kenyan. I have a database of about 100 female DJs. I talk to 27,000 DJs online. I've been in the music industry for the last 30 years. I have performed and live in, of course, my country, Honduras, Austria, the United States, India, Colombia, uh, Panama, and at the moment, Zimbabwe, and at the moment, Kenya. And in all those countries, I have lived for over three years. I, I have discovered the power of women voice connected to the male voice. So I have been leader of several bands that are across the world, you know, where we actually promote gender equality. I am a singer songwriter based in Nairobi. I, I just uh, have been doing this maybe officially or commercially for the last maybe three years, but I started right after high school, which is a few years ago. I'm young, <laughs> but um, that's, that's basically what I do, yeah. <clears throat> I'm here kind of as an ambassador representing an organization called Women in Music. They are headquartered in New York City, founded in 1985, so this will be their 33rd year. They have chapters across the United States, as well as in the United Kingdom, Great Britain, Northern Ireland, Brazil, Canada, Jamaica, Barbados, and it is my hope after today's uh, board that maybe we can open a dialogue about starting an East African chapter of women in music. The primary purpose is to empower women in the industry to identify business opportunities and to be the best professionals they can be in short. Good afternoon. My name is Wandiri Karimi. I'm the director at the Conservatory of Music. I like to say I'm a musician who went to law school. So I studied law um, up to master's level for intellectual property. I was putting my passion for music and my passion for making sure that creatives and specifically in my, in my capacity as the director of the Conservatory of Music, um, women get paid for what they're doing. So I'm looking forward to our discussion and looking forward to your questions. Okay, we'll go back this way. Wendiri, you can start. So the first question is, what strategies have helped you succeed as a woman? Well, um, many people say women multitask. So my life has been multitasking all through. I, I started school and started music school at the same time. So I was in law school and music school at the same time. And I, I had to work harder than my male counterparts because for them, you know, it was easier. So first of all, hard work, I focused a lot. Um, and then I used a, any opportunity that I found. Like if I found uh, musicians who are better than me or people I needed to learn from, I would sort of like not stalk them, but, <laughs> you know, like have conversations with them because I felt that that's a real good way to learn. I set out very early to get as much education as I could, both from the formal schooling system as well as traveling the world when the opportunity presented. And, and I decided also very young that I wanted to be that woman that could not only inspire others, whether it's women or men, uh, but that I could help other women become successful. And uh, it's really inspired me to be with the music industry in particular, although it's very male-dominated. There, there are amazing women working across the music industry in one capacity or another. So for me, it's just focusing on a couple of goals and, and sticking to it. Well, for me, um, 
I was born in a village, raised and born, and I literally moved to Nairobi in 2011, and I had nowhere to start. I, had, I didn't know anyone, but when I came, I knew what I wanted to do, and I applied to music school. I went to the Conservatory of Music, and I went to Saudi Academy, and just acquiring that education was important for me because I honestly had no clue. And um, I didn't study music in school as well, so I think education did it for me in terms of opening up my mind and also interacting with a bunch of people from varied places and varied opinions and varied um, mindsets that really opened me up as well, yeah. Could, could I just jump in there? Yeah. Um, I think there's a kind of gap in people's knowledge about what music education it actually is. delivers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some people think you don't need to be educated mm -hmm. to be a musician. Yeah. Could you kind of fill that gap in there on what it, what it did for you? Yeah. Well, I feel like if you learn how to cook, if you learn how to do the basic things in life, how can you not go to school for something that you're passionate about? How can you not study about something you want to live off? It does not make sense to me for you to pursue something with no idea, no clue, no um, lessons, nothing, you know? You have to learn music and you have to, at whatever level you are in or for whatever you want to do, it may be an instrument or vocals or whatever, it has to be learned. I think there's no other way around it. I'm, I'm going to take over fee message. Um, I have to say that I've been fortunate. I come from a family of three generations of academics and artists. And they have understood the importance to use not only academics and art, but also spirituality and the service to the community. So uh, that's the way I work, and this is the way I've been raised. So that was my great grandparents, my parents, my family, and my children. And we are involved in a professional way in academics. And at the site, we have music, we have people in sports, we have people in, in visual arts, we have people in dance. And this is what I do everywhere I go. Link people from different cultures and link people from different trends to work together to get stronger. I come from a minority group called Garifunas in Honduras. We are the 1%. So I was the perfect formula for failure. Because I'm black, I'm a woman, and I come from Latin America. Put it that way. But not. My parents, they were also in the same situation. My mother is a mathematician. My father is a lawyer and a scientist. And they actually created cultural platforms in the community that were not related to the black community in my country. Because we are 1%. And this is what I, the message for you. is always success if you're educated if you're connected with your inner self, if you're connected to your community, and if you really follow your passion, there's no way that you can fail. I really believe in the power of prayer, and prayer has got me to where I am, and having a relationship with God, because it, it sounds like a religious thing, but really, I mean, God can give you an insight into people and who they really are. And that, for me, is important, especially when I want to do business. Because people can come a certain way, and yet you, you finally discover who they actually are, and you won't go down when they go down. You understand? And the, the second thing is, to emphasize their point, I really believe that music education is very important. Before I was a DJ, I was a pianist for pretty much my primary school and my secondary school life, I played piano. And uh, through that, I, I had at least a basic understanding of music. Even movies like The Sound of Music, which is a classic, is one of the places to start if you haven't actually gone to school yet. Um, the, the other thing that I would say is I understand servanthood because of my relationship with God. If you know how to serve people you know how to solve problems and people start calling you for work. I, I don't know if I'm making sense. If you know how to take care of other people, because that's my principle. If I'm doing business with you, I have to take care of you. I have DJed in the events that Wani has performed. I have also talked with Wandiri about making collaborations with her orchestra and I could DJ as well. And so it's about, like she said, it's about making connections and working together with people. And so, 
as, as a woman, I have a different perspective when it comes to taking care of people. Like even building the DJ association, I used to do things which probably men would think of is very silly. Like if I saw on my timeline that a certain DJ was having a birthday, I would post and say, happy birthday from the Association of Disc Jockeys East Africa. And I, that means I was almost posting every day. And it built the group to where it is. It formed a network. It built trust. And so I have that authority to speak into somebody's life and try to encourage them because this is not an easy walk, as we all understand. Um, sure. Can you just... Um touched on something there that I want to just expand a little bit on the others. Um, is anything about your journey been, you think, different because you were a woman? Anything about the journey that you've had to where you are now that has been different because you're a woman? Definitely. <laughs> um, so I'm a guitarist and I don't sing. Like, Fee, Fee's a singer, songwriter, she plays guitar. So every time I said, I'm in a band, people would say, so you sing? And I'd say, no, I don't. I am a guitarist. That's who I am. I don't sing at all. I can't sing to save my life. And I felt that that, that was a characterization that we had, that instrumentalists are men and, and, and um, singers are women. And, and that, that was different for me. And when, when I started at the conservatoire, I thought um, we need to build more instrumentalists. We need to have a space where your gender doesn't determine where in music you fall. And yes, so I feel, I feel that was different for me. And globally, it's still largely male dominated. And so what I've seen happen with women is they often show up and they feel that they really have to muster strength to be the only woman on the panel, the only woman at the represent, the only woman representing their country, the only women of color, uh, the only women, and the list goes on. So you're, so you're made to feel that you're this token. It's that you know, you're not serious or you're not representative of the industry broadly, you just happen to be there. And so I'm gonna answer the question even further afield, if you forgive me, uh, but I was fortunate enough to be at Sauti Sabusara last week on Zanzibar, and they held on the margins a movers and shakers panel, and one of the topics, uh, kudos to them, was women in music. And there, I encouraged everyone in the room, but especially to all the men, as you move forward in your career now, ask if you're invited to speak on a panel or at a conference, how many women will be on the panel with you? How many other women uh, that are also in leadership are going to participate? Uh, is, are the organizers aware of this and focused on having diversity? Uh, but in addition, how many women are uh, lawyers in entertainment? or producers, or music managers, or heads of the band, or the lead writers, and so on. So when you're putting your band together and you're looking for the next guitarist, you're not automatically thinking of your male friend or your childhood friend, but you're trying to think a little bit broader, like, hey, it'd be cool if we could be a little more of a diverse group and we could have that diversity represented by trying to balance male and female and not immediately go to stereotypical traditional roles for male and women. I think it's a very large barrier to touch. And there's no question in life, as with music industry, uh, <clears throat> it is always, you are always working that much harder to get ahead, to get anywhere near the same pay. And you're always dealing with harassment, whether it's sexual harassment, financial harassment, uh, stigma, uh, culture, religion, and society that dictates how women should or should not behave. So I say, uh, men, please empower the women around you and treat them like equals. And women, please believe you are an equal. Yeah, so that's kind of moved us on a little bit, hasn't it, to the, the barriers, right? So maybe we just carry on with that flow um, and just carry on talking about what barriers and obstacles there are for women to actually become successful in the music industry? I'd say two things. Uh, a personal barrier for me was my size. Nobody took me seriously. I would walk into meetings and people were like, who is this child, you know? And 
that, that's a personal barrier. And I had to prove myself a lot for most part of my music career. And you always have to come with the big words, oh, I have been on CNN, oh, I have done this. And you just don't get that respect of, you're an artist, you deserve to be, you to be in this space. So that's a personal barrier. But I think I'm overcoming it with time, yeah. Um, what, what, what did you do to overcome it? I just, I'm, I'm too confident in myself. <laughs> I, I, I just got to a point, I mean, it does get to you, it does, when you have to prove yourself because people don't think you could possibly be that good because you're that small or, you know. So, and I think even in the current time that we are in, there are trends of what women should look like. You know, women are supposed to be thick as we speak. Right now, that's the current trend and, you know, and that kind of thing. And so people are just not looking to you until you make them look your way. So I think I just, I took it head on. I was like, I have a special gift. I'm unique and I, I can just do anything that anybody else can do. Yeah. C can I just dig into that a little bit further as mm -hmm, well? Mm -hmm. Because you have a quite a unique style. Mm -hmm. Is that a response to uh, how you see the industry for women and how difficult it was to, to get people to take you seriously? You have a unique look and brand. Yeah, well, I feel like uniqueness is very important. And that's the thing I think women also are not realizing in the industry. In the fa we, um, the world is trying to equate all of us in the sense of we all need to look like this. We all need to sound like this. We all need to do things like this. But I feel like this is the perfect time, especially for Africa. All eyes are on Africa as we speak. And this is the perfect time to be you. And there can never be any other person than you. And you can never make you know, something that's more worthwhile than what you can make, you know? So I feel like uniqueness is very important. I feel like also in developing a brand, you need to be unique. People know me for head wraps. Everybody knows I wear these things. And um, it's I think people identify me with. So I feel like if you have something unique about yourself that you can let people into, Janelle Monet has her suits. Um, I mean, who do we know for anything? Every, everybody has their own thing. Pink with her hair and the pink hair. So I feel like you need to maybe embrace your uniqueness and find beauty in it and just let people come into your uniqueness. Don't dim it down because you feel like it's different, but just like invite everybody to your uniqueness. I yeah. guess that also works for the womanhood thing as yeah, well. Exactly. You, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, for me, mentoring is one of the key elements to transformation and also l to fight ignorance. Sometimes we don't, we don't understand the industry because you put everything in the same place. When we talk about culture, it's different when we talk about commercial industry. And at the moment that you decide what is the trend that you want to follow as a woman, and you are empowered, you will see Miriam Makiva, if I give you names, you know, uh, Janice Joplin. You know, I'm telling you names of very remarkable women who knew exactly what do they wanted to do. You know, the trends don't come f for the needs of the public. It comes for the needs of yourself. Um, I have a platform for women in Central America that I founded 25 years ago. It's called Women, of the women in Arts. So we create opportunities in Central America for women. I'm a founder, I'm an assessor for that organization because I, I have not been working on the industry all my life. I'm a, a travel agent and an intercultural learning expert. So that was my job. But at the side I always noticed that we were not really given our space. So I say, let's do something. So if something is not working on your space, do something that make it happen. Because complaints will always be there. You know, you always say you're go always going to blame the government. You're always going to blame the industry. You're always going to blame your neighbor. You're always going to, because you're a woman. Fine. It's true. There was, economics is actually the biggest challenge for everybody. Money. Right? At the moment that you understand how can you provide for yourself, you'll be able to dedicate time for your education or music or your education for your passion. So, so are you saying that mindset is a barrier, having um, the wrong mindset? Is that what you're saying? Not necessarily the mindset, because uh, people, it, they, they, if they know what they want to do, but they don't have the skills, I'm talking about ignorance. It's the lack of knowledge. Yeah? It, and, and I think at the moment they really want to pursue something, they have to dedicate 
You know, they have to reach a level that other people will like to also reach. And this is what's going to make you different. It's not, of course, like Fee say, the look it counts. But actually what makes the trick is that you are grounded, you so, know, and that you can actually last for a long time with a comfortable life. They can actually make you happy and make happy the people around you. Because you, if you're struggling to eat, and you're pretending to be a celebrity without having any money on your pocket, excuse me, okay? That's actually the biggest problem. Your, your parents are the ones who start and saying, okay, are you providing money to this house? So think about it. So we're talking about the barriers, sure. It's, it's just like when you were in high school and there was the people in your class who were intellectually gifted and then there was you. Like, you had to put in extra hours to you know, do the same exam to get the same grade, right? And to some degree, it's true. Women need to do twice as much work to be considered half as good sometimes. And I, I remember there were times when the boys would want to stay over and they want to practice all night, and I wasn't allowed to practice because I'm a girl. It, it was really that thing of the men didn't want to get in trouble with anybody, so they, they preferred I went home and then I come back the next day than staying over and practicing with them because they don't want gossip and rumors and uh, people misunderstanding the situation. The, the other barrier, I would say, is also negotiating for what you are worth because I don't know if people think that women are hobbyists and that men are professional, but sometimes I really had to prove that I am doing what I'm doing professionally as a DJ. And I am bringing the same service as the rest of them. And I, I, my approach, rather than using sex appeal and so on, I, I prefer to be an evergreen brand. Because even if you try to be hot, five years from now, there'll be others who will come who are probably hotter than you. So you might as well have your selling point as being able to teach, being able to deliver on services, being able to play well. Um, just, just being a professional, really. And when people see you as a professional, that's what they call you for, isn't it? And... I, I'm also keeping my future in my focus. As much as I'm a DJ now, maybe I want to go into construction in the future. Maybe I want to be a diplomat. I want to do something serious after this season ends. So that's the thing. Keeping focus is also important because if you don't do that, you can easily get lost in the entertainment world. And you can talk a little bit about the barriers that you think there are for women. Um. I think everyone's been following the Me Too movement, Time's Up. And the thing is, the stories about Kenya haven't come out. But we all know what happens. And the culture of silence, I feel, is a barrier for what's happening for women. Because we, we want to get ahead, but the stories of rape, the stories of um, harassment, the stories of just you're unable to work because you're a woman because things have happened to people uh, before us there are people who've left the industry because of what has happened to them so it's 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 difficult to to um imagine how difficult it is for women because i guess for men it's not something you deal with but for women here i i, I can assure you like i'm me too and i'm sure everyone has a me too story here but then we've not even opened that kind of worms in kenya and um that barrier i think is something we need to start talking about and getting over it and getting over the culture of silence so that we can actually just now move on and move on in a nice clean way I know you're probably going to move us on, <laughs> but I wanted to take an opportunity to read just uh, five statistics to the group. This is not from uh, Kenya or East Africa. I don't have official data, uh, but I'd like to share with you just to underscore what everyone here is talking about. And this is happening in the United States and Canada. Less than 6% of recognized producers are women. So that means more than 94% of recognized producers are men. And there has been not a single female winner as producer of the year in 46 years of the Grammys. The Grammys put on by the Recording Academy, the highest award recognized by the industry. Um, when it comes to the United Kingdom, the gender divide uh, for all music jobs is almost 68% men and almost 33% women. 
so a third. 50% uh, of women in music earn less than 10,000 pounds a year in the United Kingdom. I can't translate into what that would mean if we were to look at the Kenyan shilling and have an equivalency, but the, the exact figure in Kenyan shillings would be a million three nine five five twenty. $13,000 in the United States, which in, according to the United States economy would be well below the poverty line. And I can't imagine what the equivalency would be here. So we can't compare exactly. I'm sorry, I don't have that data. Billboard magazine, who every year lists the Power 100 in the music industry. In 2015, uh, well, it says Power 100, it was actually 127 uh, entities that were uh, honored. There were only 15, one five. The American Association of Independent Music, which is a trade association for independent labels, say that 15% of labels of the indie owners are women, uh, which is a very small number because in the United States, there's a very high percentage of small and medium-sized businesses that are owned by women. So again, we're falling well below uh, the statistics. Uh, and in the Caribbean, 70% um, to 30, male, female, uh, are in the industry, and there are very few women in publishing, in songwriting, and uh, in production. And in Jamaica, only 12% of the membership for their collecting society are women. So it's good sometimes to put some data so it doesn't sound like uh, we're just having an emotional uh, complaint or a conversation, but the facts speak for themselves. Thank you. I'm hoping this next thing might be a little bit empowering. I hope I'm not going to be disappointed. But if you believe that men and women are equal and deserve equal chances, can you stand up? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Thank you. That's good news, right? We're going in the right direction. So uh, before we go to q and I'd just like um, our panel to actually uh, give us their personal take on what advice they would give to women who want to get into the music industry or become more successful in the music industry, what personal advice they have to make that happen. Would you like to start? So at the Conservatoire, we've, we've just started um, a, a fund for women for scholarships specifically for women who want to study music. And the reason why we did this is we, um, last year in, over the International Women's Day, um, concert, um, yes, on the 8th of March, we had a concert and we realized that there's so many women who, who came out. Um, if you pass by our stand, you'll get to see some of the video of, of what happened then. So this year, we are launching the, the women's um, scholarship for people who want to study. So like we've all said, education is important. I can say one year, one year supported people at the conservatoire, and th there's, there's, there are opportunities, but unless you go out and you look for them, as a woman, and even as a man, you need to go out, look for the opportunity, and, and those will come. So we do get to do audi auditions and look out for that, and make sure you, you, you work hard, focus, and do what you need to do to get ahead. So, advice? Advice, Specific? yes, focus. Look for your opportunities and come, come to the conservatory, see, see what we can do, and talk to people like us. We are, we are around for a while, and just talk to us, and we'll, we'll let you know what you need to do. Yeah? Find a mentor, especially if you're starting out in the industry, and treat it like a business. I know we're all passionate and creative, and we don't always want to think about business, but this is what's going to sustain you and your passion and bringing that business acumen to your work. And if you don't have a head or a sense for business, learn it and find other people who can help you get there. Um, mine would be maybe to address something. Um, I feel a lot like you, like we walk the same streets, Tunapanda the same mats and everything. And I feel like just an observation of the system that we live in, the system in itself fights 
us as artists because one, we have families. How many of you, your parents are like, you can't do music as a career? There's so many of us who went through that thing where our parents are like, what is this? You know? So there's that. There's, we always have had to overcome the fact that we need to prove that this is something credible that we could do. And then um, just in the entirety of the nation, even music aside, we find that um, we were raised to be competitors. We used to be told, David has 422 marks, where chairs are too. You know, we were raised to compete and we were not taught how to collaborate or to cheerlead. And so we find that as we grow older and we go into this career path, no one wants to help the other person and no one wants to learn from the other person. So I would say collaborate, 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 collaborate. Um, um, that cheerlead thing, that's yeah, a good one. Yeah, collaborate. I flew in today from Italy and we did a collaboration, f a cross country collaboration. Israel, Italy, Kenya, like the whole shebang. And I've learned so much from these experiences of collaborating. There's so much gold from that. And the other thing I would say, um, as she said before, if you're not in touch with yourself, everything will define you. Because as a woman, we are prone to insecurities. We are women and we feel things, we are feelers, we feel a lot. And if we are not strong in the sense of who we are and how God defines us, as she says, then we are much likely to divert from the initial plan. I fail and I refuse to believe that we are here to just exist. I feel like we are all here to do something special. We, all, we each have an assignment to do. And the faster you find yourself, the faster you can align your purpose and your vision and your career goals to your assignment. And therefore, everything, everything that could be a distraction becomes... Just uh, by the way, because finally you can align yourself to something and work towards something. And finally, burn with it. Have fire for what you do, man. Like, it needs to burn inside you and consume you. If you cannot wake up at night and feel like, damn, I need to, to learn that song, I need to write that song, you need to burn. Because if you don't burn, when people come to cool off your dreams and everything, you, you just die out. But you need to burn and you need to supersede every expectation and everything that is likely to put you out. So burn for your passion, write your goals down. Please do not try to be like anybody else. You are uniquely you, as we said before, and only you can achieve this assignment that you've been put here on earth to do. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. First, because we're talking about women being clear and focused on their career, secure your finances. Because a woman without money is trouble, isn't it? Because if you want to engage in a commercial music industry of entertainment, you're going to be engaged in situations that actually are the ones we are discouraging. So secure your finances, get your careers gone. When we say career, is either if you want to do music, go into a high-level education, get a degree. Musicians like Jackie Zay are seasonal. You know, you're going to last for a very short time. So get your degrees so you can be able to do other things when you're not able to perform. You can be an educator. You can move into production. You can move into a different levels. And this is not only for the women, but also for the men. Because if you're men and you don't have the money, you're going to be used. And then the complaints start, but you have allowed that to happen. Because you have that big dream to become the star, and you get engaged in business that are not necessarily the right ones because you're not in the right moment. But if you're empowered with education, with preparation, with finances, you're able to overcome everything. I would say we all have different amounts of money in our bank accounts, but we were all given 24 hours. Now the question is, what are you doing with your 24 hours? We all have phones, but it's easy to waste a lot of time on social media and on WhatsApp. And yet, that's the same phone that can set you free if you're using it to research and to find opportunities. At least for me, that's what's worked. Like, I go on online and I discover potential clients. I contact them. I get work. I network with people online and offline. 
and I try not to be on social media too much unless it's related to work. Um, usually I'm there because I have to stay in connection with the DJ. Sometimes you have to be present so that you can speak into their life or if they need something, they can contact you. But I'm learning to be more careful with what I do with my 24 hours so that it's productive. You might have to make some readjustments. You might have to sleep a little less. You might have to spend less time with certain people. They're not bad people, but if you're going in a certain direction, they might not be going where you're going. So you can still keep them in your life as loved ones, but you focus on the people who are forcing you to level up, the people who are forcing you to enter into the place that you're trying to go to. And stick it out. It's going to get hard. It's going to get discouraging. You must stick it out. If this is your dream, chances are you've come too far already. So you might as well finish the journey and make it to where you need to go. And another thing I would re also say is do not be afraid to ask for help. Stop sitting there playing the what if game and overthinking what if this doesn't work? What if they don't want to do this? For ask. The worst that can happen is that you get a no, then you ask the next person, and you ask the next person until you get the door that you want opened. At least ask. Don't sit there and get stressed by the thing that's frustrating you. You can even come and see me. I'm at stand number 14 here later on if you want, if you want to talk more. But the, that's the advice that I would say. You have 24 hours decide what you're going to do with it so that you can get to where you want to go and with whom. You become the company that you keep as well. Thank you. Um, I'd like to open it up to questions from the floor. Does anybody have a question? There's somebody roving around with the mic, I think. Don't be shy. There's one at, right at the back. And there's one at the front as well. Hello, ladies. Hi. Uh, my name is Tabu Osusa. Hey, Tabu. And I think uh, you guys have really, it's a very good panel, actually. We have learned a lot. However, there's uh, something that is making me feel a bit uneasy. <laughs> I think uh, maybe I'll address that to Jackie, the DJ. Uh, she said that um, this is, she's on phase one. But also, she believes that maybe when she goes to phase two, she could be a diplomat or what, anything else. And she used the word uh, a more serious. So I think, Wani, you've just covered it, but I might as well just ask it again. Um, as Andrea was reading the statistics, it got me wondering who, is giving, who are giving these opportunities? And yeah, because how come the women are so underrepresented in all these things? So obviously the Grammys, yes, there's a whole committee and whatever. Um, part two would be, so would it be a thing of like Fee has her own brand, um, DJ Shockey, DJ Shockey has her own thing. So is it a thing of like we also just create our own opportunities and incorporate more people? There are many women working in the informal economy, which means they're probably not getting economic advantages that comes with being recognized as working formally in the formal economy. And that said, I realize it's going to be different yet in East Africa, so I, I, I'm not going to trivialize or minimize um, how the economics are working in this society. Emulate that, feel confident. It's not like we are not working. It's because when I was at a forum once and somebody said, when there's a, an opportunity out there, a guy will have one skill out of the nine that are, that, are, that are required, and the guy will apply. But the girl will ask herself, you know, um, I don't have this other skill, I don't have this other skill, oh, what will my mother say, what will my kids say, what will my, my husband say, what will my boyfriend say? So we have all these voices that we are all listening to, and maybe it's just, it's how we are, I guess, as women. So you have to get yourself out of that space and, and, and think about yourself as, I want this thing, and I'm going to do it. Let other guys just move, move out the way. That's actually, move out the way and go, and go for what you need to do. And then for maybe in five, 10 years, our statistics will probably be better than that. In fact, I believe that because 
we are, we are quite a number of people up here, and, and it's not what it was five years ago. It's not even what it was in the music industry in Kenya three years ago. So just keep doing what you're doing, and, and, and we'll get here. You'll be up here next year, <laughs> two years from now, who knows? Yeah. Can I just add quickly that we know, statistically speaking, the music industry has been growing significantly in the past several years, and it's on a trajectory. And for, from the research I understand, your overall entertainment economy is uh, 2.1 billion. Live music and touring is still alive and well, so you're not relegated to one role as an artist. All these things you have, social media, as she said, but some of us are just not doing. And sometimes you need to do so that people can see you. And when they see you, they approach you. So calm down. Because if you think you can't do these things, they're not pride in the sense of kujiskia, just pride in the sense of, hey, me, hey, maze. It just needs to calm down. You need to really humble yourself and just like roll flat on the ground for what you want to do. Yeah. It really, uh, I'm going straight to your question. Each artist is a brand. And there is good brands, is bad brands, yeah? So what makes a good brand? That one that lasts long, that has good quality, the everybody wants to wear, and that happened with all of us. I have, and I'm just humble to say this, I work with uh, most of the most remarkable artists in the world, you know? They, uh, they have the opportunity also to come to Kenya and mentor because we believe that if we have reached a level, if we have resources, we use that money and we recycle that money. You know, I put platforms together to give opportunity to women and men, you know, to become stronger. If I know how to get that possibility to other people, they will do it with other people. Just to give you an example, uh, Anita Loinas is one of my partners from my platform from Panama. She is a flamenco star. And the, moving cultures win because it's the platform. But we collaborate together, you know? We have gone stronger, I have learned from them. I bring percussionists, singers, dancers, instrumentalists, and they have the benefit to teach them because they want to know what Africa is offering, and they teach them. So we create this bilateral exchange. And like I say, Masika is now mentoring the school projects they are under moving cultures. We have 10 projects in the city, in Kawangware, in Kibera, in Kibagare, in Limuru, just Kariobangi, just to mention a few. And what do we do? We reach a level, we keep trying to learn more, and we want the little ones to be inspired and also to be committed. And like I say to you, if you have it, use it, get educated, I get very surprised when people call me, and again, I got the Life Achievement Award as a Garifuna singer last year in New York. I was not expecting that, you know? And I'm telling you, it's not because so, and, and thank you. And they are following your, your, your tracks, you know? I'm being invited by the Queen and the King of Sweden for a children's conference. I was also, and I'm telling you this, just humble. Because if you're on the right, I'm a woman, is that stopping me from achieving achievement that I dream? No. So that's my message. Be your brand. Do we have another question? In our industry, we have the same number of females who are dominating the industry, and there's no more coming in. And even if they come in, they don't get to the same level of success. So what exactly should, do we need to do to change that? Yeah, that's basically it. And also, as we do it also, as we empower the girl, how do we also ensure we are not leaving the boy behind? Yeah. So, as a newcomer, uh, <laughs> Mimi, uh, personally, just in touch with my own personal experience, I, I don't think we... There are so many amazing female artists that we do not know about. And so many things play into that. The media, how many... We've always had this conversation of how uh, Kenyan music is barely played on radio and stuff like that. And we know in places like Tanzania, 90% of their radio play their music. And so the things that contribute to the fact that not so many women are hard, I heard, I had, <laughs> not so many women, one as Kizwa. And um, I would like to say, you're unhappy. And if you're unhappy, you become a hater because the people who are going out to do what they want to do, you're not pleased by what they want to do. 
And as I told you, this competitiveness to me raise you an eye, yeah. Where? Upati 400 kama nani? It needs to stop because if we compete in this way, we do not move. And if we keep doing things the way we are doing them, we do not find ourselves for who we are and love ourselves for who we are. So this titling and labeling and boy child and do what? Personally, I think it's a title that just divides us deeper and we need to be woke enough to see that it's just not working for us, I guess. Yeah. Thank you. We've, we've kind of come to the end of our time, but I hope you've seen like I've seen that we've got five powerful, beautiful, successful women on this panel who are beautiful role models for other women that they've not walked through some door that says no more trouble, no more strife, no more obstacles, because that never happens. Just like the people that are trying to emerge, struggling to start, they're having to face the same obstacles and different obstacles as they move through their careers. They're having to rework their strategies. They're having to think about new ways to do things, how to compete in a world that's mainly dominated by men. But they're, they're not focusing on that. I don't know whether you've noticed that. But there was none of the typical feminist agendas being mentioned here. They're focusing on doing them. They're focusing on being good at being them. And they're doing an amazing job at, at it. And I think that is a wonderful message for all the women in the room and the men too is about how to, how to succeed and how to be positive and how to grow and how to be focused about what you do. Um, and then oh, that, that by itself overcomes the challenges. Anyway, I'd just like to say a big thank you. I've got their permission from them to offer their uh, time after this. That If anybody's got burning questions or wants to just chat a bit about what they said, they're all willing to be here and chat to you if you've got further questions. Uh, all that remains is just one big hand for all of them. Thank you. Thank you.